and now I have this face capture here and I'll drop it right here and we have the face capture like this is pretty damn polished it looks just like a game well except for this <laughs> Hi guys, my name is Barodante, and welcome to Rococo Smart Suit Pro 2, actually. It's the second version of it. So yeah, this is my final introduction to Rococo Smart Suit Pro. And coincidentally, just yesterday, I believe, Rococo published a new really awesome update to the software that makes a huge step, I would even say leap forward in terms of magnetic immunity of Rococo Smart Suits. Rococo Smart Suits are these motion capture suits to capture your movement to be able to animate 3D characters with it obviously. Unlike super expensive systems, the way like Hollywood usually works, those systems, they use a set of huge amount of like cameras all over a specific room, and the actors wear suits that are actually just having big like white balls usually on them, because it's all about what cameras can see, and they visually track the movement. In here, it works differently. There is no cameras anywhere. I can literally take my laptop and the suit and capture my movement anywhere else like even outside by using like the hotspot from my laptop it uses Wi-Fi to connect but to capture movement it actually uses I'm thinking where's the easiest way oh I guess the headband so it uses this kind of oh my god my hat is broken now but yeah, this kind of sensors, I don't know if you guys can see it. So little things like that, they're connected with this red cable everywhere that I'm also using to power my iPad here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of cables in the box with the suit and yeah, they go all over the suit and here's another marker right here in my hand here. And yeah, by the way, there's also gloves. Uh, I'll put them on in a moment as well. Right now I'm like doing just the robot here without any capture of the fingers obviously. But yeah, this headband goes like this on your head. Now I'm in full lawnmower mode. If you haven't seen that movie, you have to. But yeah, this way you get capturing everything. And yeah, the point of these sensors, they're kind of working the way the gyroscope works in a phone. So that's about it. They're not like super precise because they, they don't know where they are in the absolute coordinate system in the world or in the room because they don't have cameras that will tell that. They just know if they're like moving up, moving down, left, right, and that kind of stuff. It's not purely perfect in terms of motion capturing, but overall you can get super clean results, especially if you're developing games that's more than enough. And overall you guys can see like as I'm moving here, it looks pretty decent, but my legs keep drifting away, like I'm not crossing my legs right now. <laughs> Uh, but it looks like that because like especially feet in this corner they like have quite a trouble oh and also uh, you can see right here where the magnetometer is disabled that's where i get these orange markers so if i'll stand in the middle of the room where i usually capture the movement it will look awesome but before that let me show you guys real quick uh, the result of everything so these are my neonates the enemies for the horror game I'm working on this whole year <laughs> and yeah I pretty much captured movement for my guts neonate right here and uh, this is purely raw data it was just streamed straight to blender from the Rococo studio app I didn't alter it in any way there's sometimes a glitch on the right arm but overall this is freaking awesome like I tried this yesterday with this new update that improves the magnetic whole thing. Huge improvement in quality. Like right now it's almost like production ready out of the box. Almost. It's not 100% fixing it, but it's like using something to analyze the sensor's data and figure out what's the real coordinates of the sensor and where it's actually distorted by the magnetic fields. Somehow they made it work. So that's pretty cool and a smart system involved there. So yeah, let me guys show you how things are then. I'm gonna put the gloves on and when you put the gloves on you use this cable to attach the gloves to the suit 
and you need to remove the sleeve and roll it back because like the basic version of the suit comes without gloves or you can order it like with gloves. Oh, and by the way, this review is not sponsored by Rococo. Like they sent me this suit, but they sent it to me as a payment for a previous project. So this video is not supervised by anyone or whatever, but there is an affiliate link in the video description that they gave me. That's the link where you can go to the Rococo's website and purchase the suit. If you're ready, you can go for it. And there is a special code that was given to me for you guys that will give you a special discount. So the suit will be actually noticeably cheaper. So yeah, what's interesting about the way this suit is shipped, it has a bunch of stuff in the box. I believe I still have the footage of how I unbox it and everything. It comes with these gloves and also it comes with a special mounting mechanism for the iPhone for facial animation capture. But what it doesn't have in the box is any kind of power supply for the suit. So you actually have to use your own battery pack. And that's what I'm doing right here. Huge 20,000 milliamp power battery pack. The suit doesn't need that much. And this is like you just connect the gloves and they light up and you look like full cyberpunk now. So I'll just drop my capturing data onto my actor this yellow guy right here and yeah the fingers actually work right away uh, so yeah everything is looking messed up right now and is getting worse and worse with time which is one of the like main things about this technology of like magnetic things by the way in here we have this sensor it's like special big hub sensor and a bunch of tinier bricks on my knuckles here that are here to capture all the movement which is I, I have no idea how it works. This is like the biggest mystery to me, how it figures out the banditure of all the digits. Like I understand you can figure out this bending, the top one, and this one, the second digit. But the third one is probably just like assumed. If the first two are bent, then the third one is also bent because that's how fingers work but if you can do some kind of weird stuff like this it probably won't be able to capture that right <laughs> so yeah right now everything like drifted away a bit and generally you should capture movement like not as quickly as possible you take as much time as you need but every take you need to like calibrate and then start over so yeah and here we have this button to calibrate i'll stand up and do the ritual of that so I'll click this button and quickly run into the position and take a straight pose. Usually it should be probably done by like a team. Someone clicks this button, the actor calibrates, then someone clicks this button and the actor performs. But I can just come to my computer and do that. And the other way to do it is actually using your iPhone, but I'll show that in a moment. Oh, I should also put my hat on. All right, ready to go. So now this is way better and everything is looking just a-okay, but you guys can see how this is not where my fingers are and my head is. So the closer I get to this corner, the quicker things start drifting away and the feet are looking at it like this at each other where it's not really the case. So I really should avoid this corner most of the time. But yeah, let me guys also show you the face capture thing. Here it is, my iPhone showed up right here. I connect it, allow it, and now I have this face capture here and I'll drop it right here. And we have the face capture. Now, I'm not sure, like, I haven't tested it because it takes a very, like, complex rig of a face on the character or a metahuman in Unreal Engine. Why am I... Why do I keep standing here like this? But, uh, yeah. But yeah, a metahuman in Unreal Engine 5 has exactly the rig that would work perfectly well with Rococo's face capture. But thing is, Unreal Engine also has its own face capture app. And while overall, like the studio's 
Pro features that allow you to stream directly to Blender and many other apps, as well as uh, face capture are paid for features. And actually face capture is a separate extra paid feature. So in that regard, I'm interested to look into the workflow. Like if you are animating for Unreal Engine, do you have to use this or is there a convenient way to capture the face with just Unreal Engine and their free app? Oh, I disconnected. Yeah, I think it's because my battery pack is dead, actually. <laughs> I guess I'll have to rip off my VR headset's battery pack. Hold on. Yeah, this one is actually better. It's smaller, lighter, still has 10,000 million powers, and it has a plastic body. So probably all around better solution. But anyway, back to the face capture before all of my suit is coming back in a weird thing. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, I'm so broken. But like the capture in here is kind of basic. And you may almost think like, well, what's the point in it? Uh, but again, I haven't tried it on like a real world, like my own characters or meta humans rig to actually see how it really works when it's landing on a real character, not on just this Rococo dummy guy. But overall, it's pretty useful in terms of capturing the movement of the eyeballs, because when your character is doing something, their intention is very important to show with where they're looking at. And you don't want to just add it that to the animation manually. So this is a good thing to have. Also, blinking is working flawlessly in here. It always recognizes blinking really well, as well as opening and closing of the mouth in general. I think it you can even take your tongue out. Kind of. It's, it's kind of like a trigger. It's just tongue out or not out. Kind of like switch. But yeah, it's doing some movement with the lips. Mm, mm, like this one. Mm. So it's actually capturing a lot of stuff, but like in nuances, in terms of like, you know, if you want to make your own The Last of Us game, uh, then like for a close up, amazing, dramatic performance kind of stuff, it may be a bit lower detail, maybe. But again, it's just that when I'm looking at the way it works in here, there's a little bit of that. And also you may notice like just um, what I'm saying is not always perfectly moving the mouth exactly the same way. But right now it's actually quite perfect. <laughs> I think you know why I'm saying that it's usually worse because let me show you guys how it's actually like the iPhone was supposed to be in front of your face. And yeah, this is the final piece of the suit. This kind of uh, just a holder for the iPhone pretty much. You put it on your chest like this and it works pretty well, but it's not a perfect solution of course, because this way you can't like punch forward a lot. And the second thing about it is that right now it's like at quite a, like my face is at least two times smaller on the viewfinder of the iPhone. And that probably affects the precision of the capturing for sure. Like it looks very stable and precise, but I'm pretty sure like the smaller it gets and if it's like leaning a bit downwards, usually it would be like this almost, like from the bottom. And this way, like, it's mostly seeing my mouth very well, but my eyes are not already seen so well. They're, like, from the bottom a bit. And because of that, I feel like certain tiny details, like squinting in general, it's not even really trying to show it in the capture, even when I'm really close. Yeah, like, blinking, like, closing your eye is like a trigger, like an on-off thing again. But again, this may be the way this particular dummy is rigged to do. Maybe it's because the way it's showing in the preview on the iPhone, it's uh, like seeing all the little details of my movement of the face. So maybe this is just the way this dummy is showing things. So yeah, just a little strap right here. That's probably impossible to really show. You just close the Velcro. So here we go, the thing is in, and it's ready! <laughs> so on the phone here, I have the buttons. I can start recording of the movement to actually create an animation, and the button for calibration. This is very useful in that regard. If you're just recording stuff, and even if you're not really capturing the face, like if I would just turn it off, so it wouldn't uh, waste my 
processor power on the iPhone and battery. Overall, it would just be my control panel. And yeah, if you just have the suit, I will need to double check on that. But as far as I remember, you can use your Rococo suit with Rococo Studio free version. So you don't have to constantly pay necessarily. But that way you don't have face capture. And like the main pro feature is this live streaming. And if you're not paying for this, you can't stream directly in real time to Blender, for instance, you just export the FBX file. Yeah, you can definitely use all the core features for free and you pay monthly for the advanced features. So you can record and do whatever you want with your suit in the free version of the studio, but you don't get to live stream to all kinds of plugins for different software and you don't get the face capture, but that stuff is not even included in other subscription options. You actually pay for the face capture separately. And yeah, also this is the monthly prices but if you subscribe for annual, you get lower prices. And in here, you also get seven days of continuous offline use or 21 days. But if you want to capture motions somewhere where there is no internet connection, I guess you have like animations in here. This is my yesterday's animations. Uh, so while it was live streaming, I also hit record and you have these controls in the Rococo plugin here. So in here you start the receiver, you start recording. This is all in Blender. So if I hit start, oh right, I need to activate the actual streaming to this app. Oh, already? <laughs> Guts is sitting at a computer. So yeah, this is pretty much how it works. But this real time thing is awesome to see your character, especially when you're animating some kind of monster. You need to see if what you're doing is working well for the very different proportions of a monster. But overall, when you start recording into the character, you can also start recording in the studio. So you get a much cleaner version of uh, the capture. In here, you can define the footlock where the steps actually happen, all that stuff. You can edit that and then export it as FBX. So overall, this is not the way like these streaming features. They're not the way to necessarily straight away animate your characters in Blender and that's it. Although honestly, if it's like just a monster for a game, you then still clean it up and adjust it a lot. So maybe a few stutters and hiccups here and there won't be a problem. But I feel like live streaming is mostly to see if you're doing the right thing. And yeah, my previous animation, the one that you guys saw in the beginning in here is just like I pushed it down to one NLA strip and I can just disable it. And right now we're writing into this new action. So that's how you work with the motion captures. You create these clips so yeah, let's capture another animation for this guy because this is the only guy I've actually set up at the moment. And by setting up, I mean in here in the settings of the rig, there's Rococo Studio Live setup. You can hit auto detect and it will build the list of names of all the bones that you actually need for this capture. So I'm not actually using any of my fingers, obviously, for this monster. It will find automatically, but I actually have to fix a lot of it because I'm using the um, Auto Rig Pro rigs and they are pretty complex. There's a lot of similarly named bones and everything. So it was choosing kind of the right names, but without the C underscore at the beginning. And that's exactly what you need to really capture. And then you also define the T pose and you should create a T pose for all your characters. And you can easily do that with AutoRig Pro as well. And after that, like it will become live and you can start recording. So this is what you need to do. And you need to do that for uh, each uh, new character. But on top of that, with all the other ones, I'll have to really be inventive because none of them have just normal head, spine, two arms and two legs. Everywhere there will be something very weird going on. But I'll show you guys a simple example later how you can pretty much do whatever you want with the data you're getting from the suit. So right now I'll just um, calibrate and stuff, stuff like that. Good to go.
<laughs> All right. As I said, laying down and stuff like that is uh, quite a stretch in terms of what the suit can actually capture because it relies heavily on where the feet are. And based on that, it figures out where the body is. But yeah, I was actually quite surprised that for quite a... I'm actually gonna thumbs up it for sure, because for quite a while when I was on the floor, it looked pretty damn good. Like, this was so impossible before the recent update. This is really cool, how I raised my feet and I was still for a little while like on the floor. Like, this is a crazy thing, this is not something you capture with a suit at all. So later I tried to tweak the timing of the footlocks a little bit, and now you guys can see I'm not drifting away as much. But generally when the feet are not locked, like in here we have both feet in midair, that's where Studio just has to rely on the raw data from the suit and that's it. Another way to work with this is actually using a treadmill mode where it's still calculating the elevation of the suit, but not the position in space. Like this way my feet will be sliding horizontally and I won't be able to walk anywhere. I'm still in one place here. But what's interesting for some reason, I can raise my feet like this and I'm not under the floor with my butt as well. So somehow this is actually working better. And generally treadmill mode, it's actually a pretty cool thing for capturing animations, especially for gaming, because your character will be moving in space with its origin. You don't need the skeleton to actually move anywhere. It needs to slide in place. So this is a very useful thing. And apparently it's actually bringing some benefits and fighting some complex situations so that's pretty cool but man like this was so impressive to me look at this that's the legit animation of someone sitting down and laying down on the floor like this is flawless so awesome if you guys like some of you guys have been following the rococo suit technology in general if you know the way it used to be this is probably impressive to you because this is pretty damn good especially in my super magnetic room <laughs> so yeah i ended up capturing just here so let's go ahead and just export an fbx let's do 60 frames per second and so this way you just import an fbx so when you import one thing you need to make sure you check is automatic bone orientation. This is very important. So the bones wouldn't be flipped upside down. And yeah, now it looks like a normal skeleton. And here's our animation. It's all right here. Now we need to retarget it onto our guts guy. And if I disable the animation here and we put our character into the T pose, we can see that the like the rest pose, the rest pose of guts is actually this. He's not holding his hands right or anything. But what we can do is like instead of going into Rococo plugins retargeting where we could define all the bones and do it, we actually go into the Autorig Pros remapping right here. And this thing knows everything it needs to know for doing perfect retargeting with its own rigs, because it knows what an Autorig Pro rig is. And right here in the presets, it knows what a Rococo version 2 suit is as well. So right now we set up all the names for all the bones that we need. And the only thing we have left to do is to synchronize the rest poses because they're very different and that means everything will be messed up so what we can do is hit this redefine rest pose button and what's interesting about it is that you're not adjusting your character's rest pose you're adjusting the source rest pose so when you hit OK, you can see the rest pose of your character, but you're actually putting the source into the same pose as much as you can. It's more about aligning the angles. So yeah, something like this. Now I'll apply it and now we can pretty much hit retarget and it will do all the 2500 frames of retargeting. Hopefully it will look correct. <laughs> 
like it's not perfect because you need to make sure you're as precise as possible with repeating all the initial angles in those rest poses that affects all the positioning later like if you put the arms a bit too low then in all the animation they will be too close to the body or something so here we are the first frame of the animation and our guy is put into a t-pose so it seems to be pretty close he's a bit hunched but maybe it's just the way this guy is <laughs> Okay, let's see. Dope. This is actually working pretty well. Like, this is pretty damn polished. It looks just like a game. Well, except for this. <laughs> then I looked at the... Here I am looking at the screen and I'm like, oh, oh, right. The arms are actually very long. Doing this, like trying to make sure I'm mindful of the floor. <laughs> Yeah, this is what I meant, like, remember guys how this was such a good uh, anim animation of sitting down, but in here it looks broken because, of course, these giant arms shouldn't be positioned at that angle for such a huge length of those arms. In here it looked just right, I was just holding my battery pack and doing everything fine, but in here things are different, so making sure you pay attention to <laughs> what's going on in Blender when you are capturing and like that's why you use streaming to see this kind of stuff. <laughs> that is just hilarious how he's flying away. But yeah, here we have the animation. Generally after that the way you work with that is just you push it down like this and you have the second clip of animation. So we can put it right here and also I turn on this previous animation here so here it is where I'm just dangling around a little bit and then I go back to my computer and what we can do is we can overlap one on top of the other. In here we also have a cool feature like blending in so that, that little corner shows up it's how it will fade into this animation or we can click auto blend and it will perfectly use this overlapping. So now when we play back, it's one animation smoothly transitions into another one with a little glitch of one bone twisting. That's always gonna happen with 3D animations. But overall, it's actually one animation transitioning into another one. It becomes quite natural. He's like just moving naturally into a different pose here. So yeah, this is how things are gonna go for the animation for my future horror game. But yeah, for now this is it. Let me bring back the lights. But yeah, I hope I showed pretty much the whole process. With this new update and much more stable results, things are actually quite straightforward, you know? Like, the hardest part is defining the names of bones, but you can do it once and then, like, save a preset. But yeah, for now, this is it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye! So yeah, this is how you actually animate a customly designed character without two legs and two arms. So in here, I simply grab like my head control, this control of my head, and I define that the spine master controller, which is this bone that's bending the whole character, that this bone is gonna be controlled just by the head, and that's it for this like super simple character. You just go ahead and do this, and you simply start the receiver, and that's it. I'm already controlling this mushroom with my head. Simple as that. Pretty cool, right?